Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, another Wednesday. In fact, this is the last Wednesday of October. Crazy to believe, isn't it? Hey, don't forget um, this weekend to set your clocks back an hour. Get an extra hour of sleep. It's amazing, right? Uh, Sunday will be November 1st. Wow. Hope you're having a joy-filled week. Your week needs joy. Joy gives us strength. Joy gives us hope. Joy gives us some good, healthy perspective. So let's find joy uh, again today as we look at the book of Philippians. We are up to chapter 3. And in interestingly enough, Paul is going to speak here about an issue that first comes up back in the book of Acts with the beginnings of the New Testament church. In fact, we're going to look at that issue this weekend at Eastland Church as described in Acts chapter 15. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about it, you can join us on Sunday, either online or in person. How about that? A little shameless plug right there. I did pretty good putting that all together. Uh, so <laughs> anyways, let's read Philippians chapter 3. That's where we're at today. And we're going to look at verses 1 through, let's go to 11. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs. Paul gets a, gets a little uh, testy here. Those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. Uh, for it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcision on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have not lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. So let's ask this question today. How do you and I keep joy in our lives? I think Paul answers it a couple of ways here in chapter 3. The first thing is this, is that you and I are going to maintain a higher level of joy, more consistent joy in our lives when we watch out for legalism. And let me give you a disclaimer here because I don't know what that word uh, brings to mind but by saying legalism, I don't mean truth. Uh, you and I as Christians and as the church need to be people in places full of grace and also full of truth. That is getting into some of Sunday's talk, so you have to join us then to find out more about that. But what I mean by legalism and what I think Paul means here is that we start substituting a growing relationship with God with rules and regulations and performance. We get more focused on what we can do for God rather than what he has already done for us. And that perspective in life with ourselves, and then even as we begin to compare ourselves to others, that's a whole nother animal that often happens when we live this way. That perspective of legalism will absolutely rob us of joy. So Paul is dealing with some that have come out of a Jewish background that want to carry over the laws of their Judaism into their Christian faith. And Paul gets very frustrated with this. In fact, 
he was witness through his missionary journeys to these many Gentiles who are you and me that came to faith through his ministry without any of those laws. He saw it firsthand. He saw how God had worked in their life. And so he's proclaiming that a relationship with God begins with Jesus and nothing else. It's Jesus plus nothing. That's how this relationship that you and I have with God begins. It is Jesus alone. And so he's really passionate here. You know, he's kind of name calling, if you will, in the beginning of this, probably because he's come out of this background himself. He's come out of this background as a legalist. Remember, he was this guy who was called Saul. He was the, pro the uh, persecutor of the church. He was the one who, who gave the okay and approved of Stephen being killed, being murdered by stoning. And so he goes on here and he states, you know what, if you want to talk about these things that you and I can do as performance, I I'm the authority on that. I I'm the guy who has the legalism credentials. I am from the right race. I'm from the right tribe. I followed the right rituals. I had the right religion and followed all the right rules. But through his conversion and through his study of Christianity, he realized that the law didn't save anyone. In fact, it simply showed that everyone needed saving. And it was the love and grace of Jesus Christ that rescued people and not their performance. You and I will keep joy in our lives when we keep our faith centered around this grace-filled, saving message of Jesus Christ. We lose joy when faith or that relationship becomes a duty or it becomes religion. Because when it becomes religion, it becomes performance. And that leads into my second point here. You and I keep joy for watching out for that performing attitude in our lives. You know, Paul went on to say that he considers all of those law things on his resume a loss compared to knowing Jesus. He says that those, those performance kind of things are garbage compared to knowing Jesus. Religious performance gets our spiritual identities centered around what we do or don't do. And that's a very tricky proposition for you and me. Now, you might be able to go a day. You might be able to go two days. You might be able to go five days feeling pretty good about what you do and don't do. But there will come a day, probably more than just one day, by the way. I'm just being kind. Where your performance, <laughs> my performance, stinks. And guess what happens? When we dwell there, because life has been about performance, it throws us into this pattern of guilt and shame and fear. And there is no joy there. Joy won't be consistent in your life or mine when our spiritual identity is centered around performance. So be careful not to have a performance mindset. And then one more thing, watch out or watch for how you can know Jesus more. We're kind of back to that again this week. What can you and I do to make him more the center of our lives? What can we do even this week to really embrace this Jesus who meets us where we are at, tells us the truth about us that we need to hear, and offers himself as the solution and rescue to our problems. That's the gospel, and that's what we have to embrace. It's not guilt and shame and fear that come from performance and religion. It's a relationship that produces freedom he has a life for you and me that is designed to make us flourish. And when we choose to know him more, 
we find more of his joy. God is good. You are loved. Lean into who he is and lean into who he says you are. Wrap up. It, wrap up in it. It's getting to be wintertime, right? Wrap up in his unfailing love and in his unfailing grace and watch joy grow in your life as you grow in him. Let that joy grow. God has some more joy for you today. All right, so wrapping all this up again today, uh, online Bible study, it happens on Sunday mornings now at 10 a.m. If you're interested in connecting to that, contact Pastor Mindy. It would be mindy at eastland.org. And for all of us, there are in-person Bible classes happening on Sunday mornings at 10. Um, if you are, are in the area and you'd like to check one of those out, join us at 10 a.m. Eastland Church on Liberty Road. And uh, now I'd just like to take a few moments and pray and we'll wrap it all up. Uh, Lord, today we thank you for our, uh, our time together. And, and I thank you for this section of scripture here. Um, it's, it's one of those things that uh, uh, at times just really is a stumbling block for us uh, as, as, the Christ, as Christians and as the Christian community. And um, Lord, uh, you know, you're fully grace, fully truth. Uh, but it wasn't legalism. It wasn't this, um, it wasn't this, and isn't, it isn't this relationship that's built around rules and performance. It's this relationship that we have with you that's built around you and you alone. God, you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross so that we could have eternal life. And any time that we doubt your goodness, any time that we doubt that you're for us, any time that the day feels very dark. All we have to do is look to the cross as a reminder that you are for us. And Lord, I pray that for those that are struggling today that they would look at your cross and they would realize that there is joy, there is freedom to be found there. That this thing we have called faith in you and with you isn't driven by guilt or shame or fear. It's driven by the unfailing love and unfailing grace that you have bestowed on each one of us and called us your children. Lord, it's incredible, it's remarkable, we don't deserve it, and yet that's who you are. You are good to us, you are good for us. We praise you today for that. And Lord, continue to sustain us. Help us to persevere. Help us to keep going. Um, the season is growing long, and, and now we're, we're entering into the colder months, the darker months. And uh, Father, I just pray that you would protect all of us physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Help us to lean into you. As Paul says, may we wake up every day with this desire, with this decision, with this intention to know you more, because knowing you more is the path to flourishing. And Father, we want that. We don't just wanna survive, we wanna thrive. And that's what you have for us. Again, God, thank you for being involved in our lives. Thank you for working in us and through us and all around us. Help us to continue to see you at work. We love you, God, and we thank you this day that you love us. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, all. It was good uh, hanging out with you again today. Uh, finish the week strong. Finish it well. Live in that joy. Find the strength in that joy. You are loved. He has you. Blessings to you. Praying for you. Talk to you again real soon. God bless.